you doing guys? This is Eric from RuleTheWasteland.com. I recently did a video about the five guns that every prepper should have for any shit hit the pan scenario. And it's not necessarily about specific guns, but about the five categories or specific type of weapon that preppers should have. And I'll put the link to that video in the description. But on that video, we got a comment from Bob Smith that said, just curious, I don't know much about guns, but I was wondering if you guys had only one firearm to choose, what would it be? What I mean is that there is a firearm that covers almost all, is there a firearm that covers almost all bases, a jack of all trades, a master of none, so to speak. I have racked my brains and I still keep coming back to a bolt action 22 for many reasons. Blah, blah, blah. Second choice would be a 12 gauge shotgun. Lord Among Us, if you had to choose only one firearm, what would it be? It's a good question. Now, it's an artificial constraint, obviously. You're never forced to choose just one. But if you're incredibly low on money or other resources, your first gun should probably be something like that that covers all bases. I'm going to disagree big time with a bolt action 22. I think if you're going to go with a 22, like I mentioned in my other video, you definitely want to go with something uh, semi-automatic. There's just so many more advantages. Bolt actions may be just ever so slightly more reliable when you're talking about over 10 year period, hundreds of, or 20 year period, hundreds of thousands of rounds. You're going to have probably less significant you know, jams and things like that. But but in the meantime, you're going to have very little problems with a gun like this, and uh, the additional capacity and reloading speed are going to be way, way beneficial. But that would be my choice. I can tell you what my choice would be for here, but I'm also going to kind of do a cop-out and give you a list of three that would be dependent on where I live. So as of right now, where I live, my top choice would be an AR-15 or a similar... A, a, assault rifle like that. I think the combination of the power, so either a 223, so right now that this might, if you want one answer, my choice would be an AR-15. The combination of the more powerful round over handguns and certainly 22s and things like that, the high capacity, the ubiquitous nature of the parts and ammo make it a good choice. It has very wide range of things it can accomplish from hunting, even small. If you wanted to, you could shoot a squirrel with this. And as long as you tried to hit it in the head or something and just blew its head off, you might have a little bit of meat left and birds even. And not ideal, but it could be done all the way up to the biggest animals on the continent could at least be killed with them. Not easily, but it certainly is possible. Certainly self-defense. So that's my primary concern when I talk about why I want guns is for self-defense. I'm not really counting on hunting, especially not out here in the desert. There's not very many animals. So my primary concern is shooting at other people that are trying to hurt me. And this is a good, obviously good weapon for that. There's a reason why governments all over the world use this as their military or some variant or similar weapon for their uh, choice. And that is, would be my choice to be an AR-15. Now here's the... Uh, other options. If, because if I'm in, uh, something I forgot to mention is we have open carry here. So if there is a not total WRL situation, but still a situation that gets a little hairy, I can go outside and just carry this around if I want and not be in danger of uh, breaking the law, which is not true in other areas. And that's a big reason why I wouldn't choose an AR-15 if I lived in other places. So if I lived somewhere like New York, not that you could even have this, but so I'm just saying in a, a bigger city, much more densely populated, doesn't have open carry laws, I would do my best to get a full-size handgun with a high capacity. So not necessarily this Ruger P90, because this only you know, has less than 10 rounds, but something like a Glock that has 17 or 15 rounds or whatever, or a, a um, Springfield XDM, I think is up to like 21 rounds. So something like that, nine millimeter and above, that has high capacity. It doesn't really matter what weapon you choose. I would choose at least a 9mm and at least 12 or 15 rounds, and that would be my main gun. Because again, if you're in a city like that, hunting is not going to be something that you're doing. And if it is, it shouldn't be a big concern for your one gun that you have to choose. Your primary concern is going to be self-defense against other people and being able to conceal it and carry it around, even in a situation where it might not be legal to do so, but you have to do it for fear of your life then you would want something like a pistol. You can't carry an AR-15 or a uh, shotgun. If I was in a much more rural area, so my third choice, if I was in somewhere like Alaska or you know anywhere that my biggest concern is not other people, but maybe using it for 
killing animals and certainly able to use for self-defense if um, you needed to, then I would use a variant of an assault rifle that was chambered in 308, or probably my first choice would be a 12 gauge shotgun, not a shorter one. I'd get a longer one for, with the hunting barrels because you can shoot everything from birds up to moose and elk. If you have big slugs and bears, it would be good for that. And um, so you can kill any animal on the continent with the various loads and you still have certainly have the ability to use it for self-defense. It doesn't have the same capacity or the same um, rate of fire, obviously reload time, things like that as a, a quote unquote assault rifle does. But you're not really going to be as concerned as with roving hordes of bandits or whatever if you're in the northern Michigan or something like that, you know, or way out in the boonies somewhere in Wyoming or whatever. You're going to be more concerned with using it for wildlife probably. So that would be my choice would be 12 gauge or a 308 semi-automatic rifle. I don't think there's any reason to go with bolt action. People seem to always mention that because they think that it's just so much more reliable maybe I guess is the idea but it's they're really a modern semi-automatic rifles from reputable manufacturers are incredibly reliable and as long as you have a few extra magazines and you can get a few extra springs and trigger pieces here and there you're not going to have any issues and the the added benefits of capacity quicker reload times things like that I just think a semi-automatic weapon is much better choice appreciate the fan especially because one of like I mentioned before the biggest single reason to have a gun in a disaster scenario is to be able to defend yourself so bolt action is not ideal for that it's okay for offensive shooting in like a sniping situation but not in defensive shooting where there might be multiple targets and you can also use them for hunting I mean and if you are a prepper you should have food stored so having to hunt for your food should be a secondary consideration not a primary plan and you certainly can hunt with <laughs> semi-automatic rifles there's absolutely no reason why you can't do that so like I said, those would be my my number one choice for where I am right now and, and my entire um, preparedness strategy is an AR-15. If I was in a big city, bigger city, or one that's much more restrictive on firearms, it would be a, the highest capacity full-size handgun that I could get. And if I was in a much more rural area where hunting was a much bigger issue, then I would go with either a 12-gauge pump-action shotgun or a... Uh, AR-15 style rifle chambered in uh, 308. That's my answer, guys. Let me know what you think. And if you had to pick one, I know I kind of copped out by giving three, but I did give my real answer too. It's AR-15. Let me know what your first choice would be in the comments. And thanks, Bob Smith, for the question. And I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching.